Fallout Equestria the Chrysalis, Chapter 9, Part 7 The windows of the restaurant were mostly boarded up, with only a faint guttering light seeping through the gaps. We stepped in to see the meager remains of a cooking fire, struggling to light up the space. The restaurant looked to have been converted to a dormitory or perhaps a barracks. Many of the booths had been torn out, their benches cluttered with rough blankets and pillows, and boxes and chests of all sorts were scattered about. The once bright decor had long since faded, and the walls were covered with various forms of crude graffiti, most of which was pornographic, violent, or both. The moment we stepped inside, I could hear a faint banging echoing from the back of the restaurant. They were slow and irregular, then at the edge of my hearing, I caught a sob, and we followed the sound, and what we found really troubles me. In what had once been a walk-in freezer were two Earth Pony mares, one looked to be about Starlight's age, if that and the other was probably around 15 or 20 years older. Both had silvery gray coats and dark manes. They were dirty and bruised, and their cheeks matted with dry tears. The older mare was locked in a small, thick barred cage that offered barely enough room to lie down in. The banging that we heard was her kicking at the inside of the lock, and she froze in the middle of winding up for another kick. I remember the look of horror as we stepped into the room, and the way it had turned to fearful into wary interest as she realized that we were not her captors. The younger mare was bound atop a sawhorse, one with a hoof tied to each leg. A bit and bridle had been strapped onto her, her tail had been cut down to a nub, and traces of dried blood and other substances stained on the inside of her thighs. Oh shit. Starlight uttered under her breath, her eyes wide. From the cage, the older mare spoke up, her voice trembling and cautious, but I couldn't help but sense a bit of hope in there. Who are you? Dusty was looking around, blinking. We're... we're here to help. He swallowed, then looked back. Star, get that cage open. Star nodded, quickly digging out her cutter to work on the cage's padlock. Dusty pulled out a knife, crouching down beside the younger mare, and cut at the bindings around her hooves. I stood back, feeling a bit... useless. Sickle stepped up, sticking her head through the doorway into the crowded room. The older mare jerked back in her cage with a gasp. I glanced back at Sickle, and it was only after a moment of consideration that I felt somewhat ashamed and uncomfortable that I did not share her reaction. Her armored, brutish head was slathered in dry blood, making her look every bit as vile as the raiders that we had just killed. The same raiders that had held these two ponies captive. Under the blood-stained muzzle of her helm, Sickle's lips curled up in a grin as she snorted in amusement. Ah, fun. I see, we found their rec room. The padlock clattered to the ground behind me, and in an instant later, a dark blue leg shot past me, a hoof striking Sickle in the face. Her helmeted head rocked to the side, though I think it was more from surprise than the force of the blow. It turned back the sharp-horned blood-stained muzzled helm, facing the pony that had just struck her. Starlight seethed, glancing up at the monstrous mare. Get. The. Fuck. Out. I looked between the two, eyes wide and pulled the stock of my rifle in tight against my shoulder. Sickle stared back at her as if incredulous that the other pony had just struck her. A slow, deep rumble built up within her, until her blood-flecked lips pulled into a savage grin. She laughed, then she raised a hoof. Starlight raised her own hoof to fend it off, but it did her no good. Sickle shoved her, and the gesture looked completely casual on Sickle's part but it sent Starlight crashing back against the wall. Starlight staggered with the impact, her wounded leg wobbling, but she regained her footing. She stood firm, hooves spread, and eyes narrowed. And Sickle laughed again, sneering down at the much smaller pony that stood against her. Yeah, whatever you say, runt. Her head drew back from the doorway, armor clattering against the ancient kitchen appliances as she turned around to leave. And learn how to fucking hit. The door of the cage clanged, and I looked back at the older mare scrambled over to the younger, practically falling onto her. I'm here, baby, I'm here. She cooed, wrapping the other pony in a tight embrace. It's okay, it's okay. It's over. It's over, we're, we're safe now. The younger pony trembled, choking back a sob as she shakily raised her freed forelegs to clutch onto the other mare. Still clutching her tight, the older mare brought over her hooves up to undo the bridle straps, sliding the assembly off and tossing it away. The final binding parted under Dusty's knife. The younger mare whimpered as she slid to the side, eased to the ground by the older one. She trembled, curling up in the older mare's embrace, and finally broke down completely. Her whole body shook as she sobbed into the other mare's chest. Dusty rose, leaning down near the older mare's head to whisper, 
we'll wait up front. The mare nodded, continuing to quietly murmur as she held the younger pony, rocking gently. We shuffled out, leaving the two alone for just a moment. When we returned to the main room of the restaurant, we found Sickle sprawled out onto her back across one of the empty booths, managing to occupy both benches at once. She was looking down at the wound that she had received, right at the edge of her unarmored groin. The whole area was caked in dry blood, and it seemed unfair to me. It looked to be about the same size of a wound as the one that had caused Starlight so much trouble, but Sickle seemed to regard the injury as a curiosity. When we entered, Sickle looked up, leveling an unpleasant grin at Starlight before looking to Dusty. Well, this was fun. Are we done here? We're gonna wait for them, he replied. I'd like to talk with them before we head out, make sure they get home safe. Uh-huh, Sickle said, having already lost interest, and went back to prodding an armored hoof at her injury. Let me know when you bitches are ready to get going. Starlight huffed and walked out, muttering something about salvage, and I immediately followed her. As soon as we stepped out of the room, I moved up close to her. Are... are you okay? I asked. I'm fine, she replied, jaw tense as she continued on. Starlight, I said, giving a pleading tone to my voice as she hesitated mid-step. For a moment, her expression tightened, and then she sighed, her hoof lowering to the ground and her ears dropping. I'm tired. I've been shot, and my brain's all fuzzy on painkillers. I got to see Sickle got that stallion because she thought it was fun, and Dusty straight up executed a wounded pony, and then there's that, she said, gesturing in the rough direction the raiders had held their captives. And if all of it weren't enough, Sickle's determined to be as nasty as she possibly can. It's just annoying when she does that to us, but doing it in front of those two, after what they've been through, that's just fucking wrong. I nodded sympathetically. And I really want to kill her for it. I just want to take all that nasty shit she's been saying and do it and turn it all on her. I think I'd be happy about it even. All ironic-like, right? She sighed, her head slumping. And that... <sighs> that scares me. Like, is that how raiders get started? Is that how she started? Well, I don't know. I said. Maybe, but you're, you're not like that. No, I'm, I'm not, she replied, giving a quiet snort. I just helped kill, what, 15, 20 ponies? I'm not even bothered that I did that. They're raiders. They need to be put down. But I helped Sickle do all that nasty shit that she did, and now I'm scared that she's going to keep doing that nasty shit to some ponies that have already gone through so much, and I don't know what I might do if she does. I... I was scared too, I said. When you hit Sickle... I thought that she was going to be pissed. I was scared that she was going to try to kill you right in front of me, and there wasn't anything I could do about it, but instead, she just backed down and did what you told her to do. Starlight blinked at me, and then she looked back the way we had come. And I, I was scared when you were shot. For a second, I thought you were about to die, and then there was all the blood. I shuddered, shaking my head. She looked back at me, a flash of worry crossing her expression, before offering a weak smile. I could feel the sense of affection grow stronger as her attention turned to me. Hey, don't... don't worry. It, it's gonna take a lot more than a bullet in the leg to stop me. Her expression held for about a second before suddenly falling flat. Ah, oh, shit. I just copied Tickle, didn't I? I gave a weak, momentary smile. Maybe a little. Starlight threw back her head, groaning loudly. Ah, oh, fuck. Dusty called out from the front of the restaurant. What? Nothing, Starlight quickly replied. I'm pretty sure I heard Sickle snickering. As Starlight huffed out a grumbling sigh, I reached out a hoof to lightly nudge her, and when I got her attention again, I offered a soft smile. Don't worry too much about it, I said, trying to sound gentle but confident. You know you're a good pony. You're just trying to protect ponies, and that's good. That's why we're here, right? She wavered, looking away. Well, no. We just came here for money. And if it were any pony other than raiders here, we wouldn't have come. I said, and I met her eyes as she looked back to me. We're willing to accept the job because if it came down to a fight, we'd be fighting raiders that prey on other ponies. We made the wasteland a little safer today, and you know, 
Even if I'd hoped to do this sneakily without them ever knowing we were here. I tilted my head, gesturing in the direction of the kitchen and the freezer beyond. I'm just... I'm glad it turned out the way it did. She glanced that way and sighed. Yeah, I... I... I guess so. I reached up again, and this time she leaned in, wrapping her hooves around me as we hugged. As her foreleg pressed against my left shoulder, I winced. She quickly released her grip, looking alarmed. Oh, wait, are, are you okay? She asked, and followed my gaze to my own shoulder. Oh, shit, wait, you're hurt? It looked like my coat was roughed up in a tiny patch with bits of dried blood crusted into the hairs. Starlight brushed at it with a hoof, making me wince as she pushed back the hairs to look at the wound itself, and in the process, blocked my own view. Shit, why didn't you say anything, Whisper? Well, it didn't hurt until somebody started jabbing their hoof into it! I said, gritting my teeth as she prodded at my shoulder. Well, it's not a bullet wound, she said, giving another press that made me hiss through my teeth. Something struck you, though, and it feels like there's something just under your skin. Okay, we need to get this cleaned out. She quickly led me to the main room of the restaurant, and right into an interesting conversation. Sickle was still kicked back, but her helm's muzzle hung freely, revealing her leering grin, an expression made even more disturbing by the dried blood matting her coat and the long, partially healed gash across her cheek. Ah, <sighs> it'd just be like the good old times, or well, would have been even better an hour ago. Uh, post-fight fucking is the best fucking. She snickered, taking a deep swig from a bottle. Dusty, meanwhile, had been glaring out the window as if to ignore her. He noticed our arrival, wincing a little before replying to her. There were no old time Sickle. It was once, and I wouldn't call it good either. Sickle snorted and coughed, lowering her bottle as she started to laugh. Oh, damn dirt, that almost hurts. Also, that's Brahmin shit. I remember you really getting into it. Starlight was looking back and forth between them, and finally leveled a flat, disapproving look at Dusty. Seriously, you, you slept with that? Dusty scowled, continuing to look away from every pony. I'd been stuck putting up with her shit all day, so I got drunk as hell that night. I don't remember anything after that, I just remember waking up with her lying on top of me. Sickle waved her bottle towards him. Well, shit. If all you need is some booze, then I got a few more in here. Here, want one? No, Dusty grumbled. And can we not talk about this right now, with those two in the next room? Sickle snickered and turned to us. So, you two done fucking already? Starlight leveled an unamused glare her way. We weren't having sex, she said before turning away, seeming intent on ignoring Sickle as she pulled out her medical supplies. As she started to clean my wound, Sickle snickered. Oh, so Star likes to play rough, doesn't she? Through gritted teeth, Starlight replied. We weren't playing at all. We were talking, I said, hoping to help, but it didn't seem to dissuade Sickle at all. Yeah, sure. Two mare friends slip off and- We're not mare friends! Starlight snapped, glaring at Sickle again. Why the fuck does everyone think I'm a lesbian? Oh, I don't think you're a lesbian, Sickle said. I bet you like getting cock just as much. Oh, for fuck's sake. Starlight grumbled, turning away to my shoulder. After a moment, she added, And just for reference, if you start talking about anything even remotely like this around either of those mares, I'm gonna fucking shoot you. Yeah, sure thing, Runt. 